Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. Today I'm going to be going over one of the first of many uh, deck builds on the Blitz game mode and the Halo Wars 2 beta. Uh, not sure if this will carry over to the full game as strategies and whatnot go, but it is at the beta and these are the strategies. I'll also be providing gameplay. I'm going to put out a video on the decks and then hopefully either that day or the next day, depending. Uh, hopefully it's the same day. I'll put out a gameplay uh, of the strategy or how I use it in game. Uh, but the first video here, and we're going to hop into this, is the Decimus character. Uh, he is by far my favorite leader. And um, these decks are more geared between, uh, or not between, four 3v3s and 2v2s. That's what I like to play. I like to play with friends. Uh, and so I play the support role. Uh, which is most effective in the 3v3, but it's also pretty effective in 2v2s. Uh, but that's what these are geared towards. If anyone wants to see 1v1s, I can I can play some 1v1s, tweak the decks, and see how they work for that. Uh, but we'll start with my first uh, character here. We'll go with Decimus. So I'm going to build the deck for you guys, and I'll explain cards. And then I'll explain alternates to some of the cards uh, that are the more, I guess, expensive or the ones that are hard to pull, uh, like the Blood Fuel Locust. Um, one of my friends does not have him, and I believe he's level 4 or 5. Um, I'm not sure. He might be level 5, and he does not have this Blood Fuel Locust, uh, and that's a major key. The Blood Fuel Locust and the Locust are what we're going to start out here. Uh, they have amazing range, good damage, and... Um, they're just one of the best units in the games that I found. Uh, the Blood Fuel Locust also has the Siphon ability, uh, which if you did not know, this unit has special weaponry that stealths there that steals health from its enemies equal to the damage dealt. Uh, the Blood Fuel Locust, in my opinion, is probably the best non-like leader unit in the game, uh, and it's definitely my favorite unit. The Locust is fine. It just doesn't have that siphon, and it's just not quite as good as the Blood Fuel Locust, in my opinion. Um, well, it's obviously not better than the Blood Fuel Locust because it's a cheaper one, and it's not the special variant. So, but it is just—it's—it's it's fine. It'll do the job just like the Blood Fuel Locust, but the Blood Fuel Locust obviously is better because it can heal itself. Uh, an alternative to using the Blood Fuel Locust, if you do not have it unlocked, that's not going to be in this deck is I believe I will go with the Reaver. I'll tell you to go with the Reaver probably. Uh, it's good at taking out air units, uh, which air units, it's kind of it's kind of hit or miss depending on the the opponent you face, whether or not you'll need air units, or to, you'll need a thing to take out air units. So that's really something, uh, if you're playing 2v2s and 3v3s, discuss with your um, who you're playing with and de decide if you want uh, anti-air if you like if you're playing a 3v3 generally you probably need two people with anti-air just in case but other than condors um the air units are kind of weak uh relative to the ground units um they're kind of more situational and i don't know they did they lack kind of the power the damage dealing that the ground units have uh, so the Reaver is one alternative to the Bloodfield Beast, as well as the Banshee. The Banshee, obviously an air unit, um, and just like what I said with the Reaver, it's kind of situational, uh, but with Banshees you can do scouting, quick scouting. Uh, if they leave a point uncapped, you can fly a Banshee over there quickly and take it and sneak out. Uh, so they have their uh, place in this as well, but those are two alternatives to the Bloodfield Locust. Next into the deck is the Engineer. Need a healing unit and the Engineer. The Engineer is the best healing unit in the game uh, between it and the Knight, Nightingale. Uh, I choose the Engineer all day, and so you need one of them in your deck, really. So if you want to do like a quick hit and then you pull your troops out, you can heal them. Or if you get into a fight and you win, you can heal your troops. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. It also comes with Detect, which is really nice, which means it can see cloaked enemies. Uh, I think that's all it does. It just yeah, it just reveals nearby cloaked enemies, but that's good enough. Uh, that's really what you need. You need something to see cloaked, uh, because cloaked enemies can become one of the most dangerous things and one of the most powerful things if your opponents don't have a Detect. Now, I haven't run into anybody without Detect completely, 
Uh, but I did play one game, I'm not sure if I have footage for it or not, where I had a sniper just decimate this guy's army because he didn't put up any detect. And it was just going off on him. Um, but moving on, next uh, is kind of... Um, first, I'll throw in the chopper here. This is important at speed. You can go and collect those energy points. It's quick, fast, just like the Banshee can kind of get in and out pretty quickly. Um, a lot of the vehicle units are like that, and a lot of the things that you're going to want to have in your deck are fast and uh, can go grab that energy or can go grab a point and then get out. Now, here is the area where you can kind of have your own little twist depending on what you prefer or what's leveled up. Um, you can have grunts, jump, pack brutes, elite soldiers, hunters. These kind of all, they all generally lie upon the same, I guess like the same tier. I put them in the same tier. They're all kind of ground units. They all have their weaknesses. Hunters can't attack the air, neither can jump pack brutes, so they're kind of huge weaknesses. Um, the elite rangers have weaknesses to vehicles and the air. Oops, sorry. And the grunts, the grunts actually, you know, are good against the ground and the air. We'll come back to these near the end of this deck and then I'll go over them again, but they will be, be they will be, they will be put into this deck. Okay, so moving on here, next two things in are going to be the Terror Chopper and the Marauder. Now these, just as the regular Chopper, are just in there to go grab points, grab things, and, um grab energy, all that different stuff, sneak in, uh, allow mac blasts, or, or, uh, condor strikes, or, um, scarab drops into enemy bases, uh, just stuff like that, really nice and easy, and the Marauder is actually a really good vehicle, it's actually a really good, um, it's probably the best, like, uh, speed vehicle in the game, uh, so that, that's a must in the deck. Uh, the Terra Chopper isn't a must. Once again, you can also substitute it with the Reaver or the Banshee, depending on your playstyle. You can also take this chopper out. It's not necessary, but it's nice because it's cheap. And if you need to go grab something quickly and you don't have a Marauder or Terra Chopper out, you can quickly drop the chopper and go and grab it. That's why it stays in my deck personally. Now, moving on, we're going to go over the three kind of big boys in this deck because... Um, I've been going on and off on whether or not I want the Scarab Assault, and I've decided against it. So, we do not have the biggest boy in the Scarab Assault in this deck, but we do have Boundless Fury, Siphon Field, and Marauder. I, like I said, I play the support role, and so these are three really powerful supports. Um, the Marauder Chief has the Rally ability. This unit inspires nearby troops to deal increased damage, and so... You drop this down and it creates like a little circle around it and everything in that circle gets buffed uh, with this increased damage so it's really nice and it's a character on top of that so what it allows you to do is have a character that's in there fighting as well as buffing troops which is really nice. Next is the Siphon Field which heals nearby enemies and harm nearby or har <laughs> heals nearby allies and harms nearby enemies for a short duration which is a really nice ability. Um, it doesn't have the biggest radius, and I believe it gets bigger if you get it up levels, but you can't. it's really hard to get card packs, so I haven't got it up, but it's still good as is. If you're doing a large push into a base against a large enemy, uh, you can fit a lot of units into this cone, uh, and it, should, it, it helps. Um, it's not as good, in my opinion, as the Marauder Warchief and the Boundless Fury. The Boundless Fury is by far the best, uh, but the Siphon Field, if you wanted to go with the Scarab Assault and have the big boy in your deck, that is no problem. I did that for a while, uh, and it works just fine. But I decided to go with the Siphon Shield, or Siphon Field, and go with the full support roll. Uh, but it is not a must in your deck. Um, the Scarab Assault is just as viable as the Siphon Field. Okay, so next we have the Boundless Fury. By far my favorite card in this deck. It enrages all friendly units, boosting their damage and speed. Uh, really lets you move in quickly and knock them out before they can really spawn, you know, backup support to help. Um, and this actually does apply to Scarabs and Condor units. So you can really, um, if you take over a base and your Scarab is still active or your Condor is still active, they'll still have this boost to their speed so they can fly over to another point and contest it. 
and really fight for it uh, before their time runs out. Uh, so it is one of my favorite cards, and it is my by far my favorite card in this deck. Uh, so we have three spots left, and the three spots, like I said, are kind of up to your own discretion on what you want to do. They're all viable options. You could put the Vortex in and go, like, pure support, like, full support, and this will pull in enemies for its duration. Um, I, f I feel like it's a little cluttered with Boundless Fury, Siphon Field, Marauder, Warchief, and Vortex. You're not getting too many units out there, and I feel like that can kind of hurt your team as a whole because they're fighting... 2v3 with boosted units like it's a 2v it's like two two armies that are boosted versus three armies that aren't boosted usually uh, and i don't think the vortex is too much needed you can get a couple of units out there along with your uh teammates armies that helps a lot um so i don't tend to go with vortex i don't use suicide grunts and I don't use Wraith. Now, I haven't done too much testing with the Blister Bag. Um, I think I'm going to start testing it out here uh, coming up. Uh, so maybe I'll make a... Maybe once I'm done with all the other decks, maybe we'll come back to Decimus and I'll maybe have some new words on Blister Bag. But I haven't used it that much. Uh, it is level 2, so that really helps. And it's a reason that I might start using it. But usually with these last three spots, I go nice and cheap. And my choices are Jump Brutes, Elite Rangers, and Hunters. Um, I just like these units, the Elite Rangers. The Elite Rangers have done really well for me, but if I was going to take anything out, it would be them to go ahead and put the Blister back in. Uh, but I feel like I need the cheaper units just because of how expensive it is to drop my Marauder Warchief, my Siphon Field, and my Boundless Fury. I feel like I just need the cheaper units to... I uh, have somewhat of a semblance of an army to throw out there, so that's why I use the Elite Rangers. It gives me some really cheap units, Chopper through Engineer, uh, to throw out there, along with Blood Fuel Locust. Uh, the deck is really built on getting those units out there 70 uh, and under, and then boosting them with War, uh, Marauder War Chief, Siphon Field, and Boundless Fury, uh, as well as boosting your friends' armies as well. Now, for the starting army, I use the Vampire. It comes with, I believe, I think it's a Terror Chopper, but it might just be a regular Chopper. And then it comes with the Grunt. It's not like regular Grunts, I don't think, is it? I should probably know this, but I don't actually know exactly what it comes with perfectly, but it's the best starting. Um, I don't like the Berserker. I don't like it coming with the jump pack brutes i just don't like the jump pack brutes as my starting units the vampire is the best and i do have the game i'll have some gameplay uh obviously showing that off uh but the starting army is not too big uh since you're spawning a lot of units and you're focusing more on support if you prefer the berserker it's not an issue i just prefer the vampire personally and so that's what i roll with i guess and so that's gonna do it for the deck that is my decimus deck and um Keep your eye out for some gameplay later that will be coming out for Decimus, as well as I'll have different episodes showing off all the characters' decks that I have. Um, I'm still trying to figure out a cutter deck. Cutter is just a... I have not seen a good cutter, like anybody playing cutter well. Uh, his deck is just hard. He doesn't have a lot of good stuff, and I'm just working on trying to polish it out as well as get some decent gameplay using him. Um, it's kind of hard. He, he's really a struggle to use, uh, but I will nail it out. I've got 10 days on this beta. We got, we're only two days in. We got a while, uh, but that's going to do it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, and keep your eyes out for some gameplay coming out later and more decks in the future. So I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.